I'm, I'm going to uh, present you some things we can do um, with telecom data for public health um, and hopefully give you some yeah, inspiration to uh, use maybe similar methods to for the HIV hack, basically. Um, so maybe some of you have already seen me presenting like two months ago. Um, so of course there will be a couple of things in common, but I've tried to change uh, everything I could change. Um, so it, we will go just a bit more uh, technical. Um, and I've also changed the two um, use cases I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about. So hopefully there is new content for, for everyone. So this is the... <laughs> The outline of, of, of the, this uh, presentation, first just a few words about uh, who is Dalva Data Insights, then why telecom data, what is telecom data, what can we extract for, from it uh, which could be relevant for public health, um, a few, three technical tips, um, and then present you two things we've developed, uh, one toolkit and one app for uh, monitoring Zika and Dengue in Brazil. Um, so we are Dalbar Data Insights, we are one of the businesses, part of the Dalbar Group, which is a group of businesses active in the developmental sector. And so we are the analytics part of uh, that big group, um, and we try to leverage uh, public and private data for social impact. And we are active in a range of different fields, um, like financial inclusion, trying to make sure uh, more and more people get access to basic financial services, smart cities, so all about mobility, helping public authorities to improve their infrastructure so that people um, have better mobility in their cities and countries, uh, public health, which will be what we will uh, be focusing on today, and some agriculture and food security works, um, trying to predict uh, yields, um, detect uh, food crisis, um, and things like that. So, um, why is telecom data a good source and that we can use in many different uh, use cases? Um, first, nearly everyone has a phone, so we get pretty good representation of the population with, with telecom data. Um, that data is already collected uh, by operators for billing purposes, so there is no additional cost or infrastructure needed to, to uh, you know, record that data, store it. Um, it's already there. Um, it's collected in a systematic way, um, so uh, I mean there is no hand uh, transcription process, it's all automatic, all systematic, all consistent. Um, and we have a good spatial and temporal resolution. So those are the main advantages. Of course, there are drawbacks and limitations. Um, so some groups are not uh, well represented in telecom data, uh, which can introduce biases. Also in many countries, you have uh, people doing multi-simming, so using different uh, operators depending on which activities they want to do or uh, who they want to contact. And so you don't um, see their all uh, activities, basically, if you just have data from one, uh, one operator. Um, it's quite sensitive data, so we have to take steps and even more now with the GDPR to make sure that we, we, we don't uh, yeah, put uh, privacy at risk. Um, it's a very large amount of data, even though right now uh, it's not really a problem anymore. I mean we have machines to deal with <laughs> those those large quantities of data. Um, and if we go back to temporal and spatial resolution, um, so the limitation on temporal, temporal resolution is that we only have one um, row in a database when there is actually an activity on the phone. So you make or you receive a, fo a phone call, you send or you receive a text, or in some cases when you have some uh, 3G, 4G activities. But um, like if my phone right now is in my pocket, you wouldn't have any records uh, from me at this moment. So that's a limitation, the tempor temporal resolution. And 
special res resolution sorry, is limited to tower areas, so it's not as accurate as uh, GPS, for instance. Um, so yeah, those are the limitations still. Um, yeah, because we have many advantages, it's still a very good <laughs> source to use. Um, not always alone, uh, but it's very informative data. Um, so what actually do, do, we, do we speak about? Um, so the main uh, thing I was, I was referring to is every time you make an activity, we'll get one row in a database, and that is called a call detail record. And you have several fields. You have a uh, unique identifier, which can be the phone number or some uh, anonymization of, of it, of the pen person who uh, initiated the connection, person who received it, um, the type, whether it's SMS or voice, the direction, whether it's incoming or outgoing. I'll, I'll get back to that a bit later. Um, some localization information, so which cell was active for that uh, communication. Uh, timestamps, uh, in case of voice activities, you can get the duration of the call. Um, we usually get fields uh, about the type of phone, so email is uh, a unique um, identifier of the of the phone, and the first uh, eight digits of it are related to a phone model. So you, using that, you can know whether the person is using a smartphone or um, you know basic phone or whatever. Um, so that's that's what we get every time there is one uh, activity on the network. Um, so yeah, uh, as you can think, we can do a lot of things with with that, and some of some of those are very useful for public health. So I just listed those I think could be useful uh, here, and, and we've we've already used some in our use cases. Other ones could be used, maybe for uh, HIV hack. Uh, first. Um, range of, of things you, you can extract is related to mobility so because we know who was there when uh, you can kind of track people um, you can know which places some people have visited like um, in general or you want to focus on overnight trips for instance for malaria because you know um, it's uh, transmitted by a mosquito which is active uh, during the night or uh, what are the fre frequent places you can look at the places of interest trying to um, identify the home location of people, the work locations, and maybe some other locations like well, they, they, they want to to go for shopping, for hobbies, whatever you can think of. Um, what are their uh, behaviors or uh, are there uh, explores or uh, returns? So do they tend to stick to a few places they visit or do, do they visit a lot of different places? Do they move a lot or not? So what is their radius of duration? Uh, how far do they usually go? Um, what modes of transportation do they use? What roads do they take? Um, all that can be yeah, computed, sometimes not directly, but can be inferred from um, uh, CDR data. Um, another uh, range of features is related to social networks and connection people have. Um, so you could try to see uh, if people are well connected or isolated, um, who is a leader or, or a follower in the group. Um, that could maybe be useful if you want to do campaigns and you want to target people who you know will have an influence on other people. Um, you could look at the density of their social network and pure social network means people you're connected to. I mean, I'm not speaking about Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Uh, it's really people that you have connex connections to with, with your phone. Um, then you could also look at phone usage patterns. Um, um, you could track consumption changes, and we've used that for food security, trying to see if there is a drop in uh, phone activity that could indicate people are saving money from their phone because they need more money to buy food. Um, some other people have shown that actually in, in other places in the world you would have people would actually call more some other people when they are in need um, because they are just asking for help and so you could maybe see that in the in the data and, and, and detect that there is a change of behavior that indicates you um, people are just looking for help um, and, and so that could be useful and, and of course a whole lot of segmentation things you could do. Uh, first is, uh, I mean, it's binary, who is using internet or not, which also could be useful for some campaigns. Um, who is using mobile money, but uh, any other thing, um, like gender, uh, yeah, but whatever you, 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 you could uh, think about to segment uh, people. Um, and so it, yeah. Yeah. 
it depends. Um, it's usually quite narrow, quite dense in cities and quite broad in the countryside. So, the yeah, a lot. So, it could be in the countryside, it could be uh, 10 kilometers uh, radius or even, even more. But in cities, usually it's, it's quite, uh, yeah, I mean, a few hundred meters max, like 50, 100 meters. Um, and, and so, yeah, because we can compute all that and many more, uh, this is this can be useful for public health. Um, one thing is if you yeah you look at people's individual mobility um, and you know how people move in a country, uh, that's very useful uh, uh, to feed ep epidemiological models on disease spreading, to trace back the the, the source of, of of an outbreak, um, and to do some prioritization of hotspots where you want to, to act on and, and try to, to cure and, and have campaigns. Um, now if you look at how different communities are inter interconnected through uh, phone data that could help you uh, better uh, localizing health facilities or um, building meaningful quarantine uh, borders. Finally, by knowing the density of people in the different regions over time, you can better distribute uh, your supplies and help and you can plan interventions at the right time. So you want to be there at the same time people are there. You, you don't want to, to launch campaigns when um, yeah, people have left the, the place, basically. So those are a range of things um, telecom data can be uh, useful for. We at Dalbar Data Insights have mainly tackled uh, this, um, but sh sh uh, some other people have done that and for sure there is room for for more than what we do. Um, so now just a few technical tips uh, when dealing with telecom data. Um, the first is uh, I've, I've, I've already shown that, that structure. Um, I told you I would get back to the direction of, of the transaction, incoming or outgoing. And usually when you get the raw data, you actually get the location and like the phone type only for one of the two people involved in a transaction. And which one of those will be told by this field incoming or outgoing. So um, basically you only get to know those details for the people who are on the network of the, m of the mobile phone operator or you get the data from. So if you have what we call an unnet call, from so like someone from Proximus calling Proximus, you will actually get two rows in the database, one uh, incoming, one outgoing, right? But if you have Proximus to Mobistar, you only have one, um, and you'll get those details only for the person from Proximus. So I'm taking the assumption we have data from Proximus, which is not the case, but um, yeah, you, you, you get the example. So if you want to process that, uh, one practical thing to do is to switch the numbers depending on the direction of the call. Um, so basically, so when, when there is an incoming call, actually the cell ID and the, the phone uh, brand, phone type, uh, relate to the person receiving the call. And so what, what you can do is when there is an incoming call, you just switch those two numbers. Um, and though you'll always have cell ID and phone and maybe some other fields for what is in your column A, and so it's a bit easier to aggregate and to, to uh, yeah, compute locations. Um, and that's actually the base um, data we use, well, uh, you know, slightly pre-processed because we do that switch um, for public health and for mobility uh, apps. So it's what we call time positions and basically uh, it can be as small as three columns. So phone numbers are unique identifiers. We don't need to have the actual phone number. Um, then cell ID, which is the location, and uh, some timestamp, and that's uh, the base of, of everything we, uh, I will I will show you uh, later. Um, second tip um, is um, so th those are uh, cell tower areas. Well, so you you see the small cell towers, let's say, and then you have what we call Voronoi cells around it. So within each of those cells, so if you take one point there. The closest cell tower is is the one that is in the same uh, same uh, shape. Um, 
But of course, that's just uh, mathematical representation. In practice, it's like the coverage areas are not <laughs> looking like that. It depends on a lot of things, um, topology, and uh, yeah, many different things. And it's pretty hard to get. So we do ha we have to make assumptions on like the location of people, um, and 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 we we want to account for that when we try to actually locate people. So one one example: if I'm sitting actually there. Um, my call could be relayed by that tour or that tour or that one or that one or that one or maybe even a bit further because there is overlap in the actual coverage areas. So um, we try to account for that um, and here if we look at the, the number of act activities, so let's say I want to um, identify the home location of people, so I have, the, uh, I have summed over one month for instance all the activities of one person on all those cell towers uh, during the evenings and the weekends. Um, and so I have that for every cell tower and uh, the, the, the maximum activity would be seven for that one. Um, but that maybe could lead to, to mistakes and so one thing uh, we do, and th there are other methods to, to do that, is to actually also account for all the activities in the neighboring um, cells. And so if we do that and we just sum for every cell, um, we, we get different numbers and then we would, we would um, assign this as the home location. Um, and in this case, of course, I've, I've designed <laughs> it so that it makes sense, but you could see there was lots of, of activity there, while here it's just, you know, it's a lot there, but not a lot really uh, in, the, in the surrounding area. So that's just something, I mean, there are diff different ways to account for it. Um, that's one practical way uh, we use, um, but it's just something to keep in mind is that um, this is not the actual location, you need to think about uh, yeah, overlapping uh, cells, uh, cell, uh, coverage areas, some uncertainty on the exact location, and, and so you may want to deal with that. And in, th in this example, you could say, okay, I mean, it's not far away, but you, of course you need to scale that to a country, and, and it could lead to big mistakes um, if you don't really account for that. Um, and if, like, let's say here, we could we we have four or five different uh, towers that could relay our calls if they're like evenly distributed. Um, it it could be that you know I make uh, I have five calls on each tower and then I'm actually playing football 20 kilometers from here and it's just always the same tower and and I have six activities so, uh, at that place and if I just look at that tower alone and not include the neighbors I would tend to think that I'm living at my uh, football club, um, which is not the case. So, um, so that's one thing to keep in, to keep in mind. Um, and the last one, um, yeah, we do have very big computers now, so computing time is not so much of an issue it used to be. Um, but yeah, still uh, it has value to, to design your code properly. Um, so a ballpark estimate of the quantity of CDS records we have in developing countries is around 20 per subscriber per day. Um, so, yeah, you think about how many million subscribers you have in, in some countries, you want to track things on maybe months or years, um, so it, it can still sum up to a, l a large quantity of, of data. Um, but fortunately, a lot of computations can be parallelized because many things you want to do are uh, user-related or location-related, and so you can just distribute that over uh, different cost thread, I mean, uh, um, and, and so you, you, you yeah, you to make uh, use of that, take, take, the, the, take that opportunity and design your code smartly um, to save some computation time. So now moving to two um, things we've developed. The first one is a toolkit to identify gender. So it's not directly related to public health, but I think it may be useful as such or uh, we, we could design something similar for uh, HIV hack, like maybe trying to get the age of people or I mean uh, any any other dimension um, so what what we've done is just a classic machine learning uh, problem is is try to compute a lot of features from from phone usage uh, relate that to a survey uh, from which we knew the actual gender of 15,000 uh, subscribers um, build a model apply that model to the the full subscriber database um, and uh, we, we have over 80% accuracy in predicting gender. Of course, it's a binary product, so it's a binary problem, so uh, yeah, the baseline is 50. Uh, we could say, and not, even, not exactly like that, because in the country we've done it, uh, there are uh, 
twice as many men having a phone as women. Um, so, but still, uh, 80 um, is a quite uh, quite good number and is uh, higher than uh, anything else we we had seen in the in the literature. Um, so what, what we've done, uh, as I said, is a, is a very uh, classic machine learning problem. We've extracted uh, a range of features. I've already spoken about a few of those, so some characteriz characterizing phone usage, some about mobility, some about social networks. Um, top up is uh, like when you refill, so you, you, have, uh, you, you put money back on your, on your account, basically. Uh, which uh, is happening a lot if in developing countries. Many people still use prepaid and not postpaid, as, as uh, is the vast majority here. Um, and some other f uh, features, like uh, if you want to buy a new ringtone or uh, uh, whether you live in town or in the countryside. Um, so we fed that to machine learning and, and got this uh, high accuracy of prediction. Um, and so to finish some uh, words on public uh, I mean, actual public health app, not not gender, which can be used later for public health. But here, what we've done um, on public health, and today I'll focus on Zika and Dengue in Brazil. Um, but just to start with a bit of history, uh, so in our group, uh, it started with some use cases um, around Ebola in West Africa. So during the outbreak, uh, we uh, computed mobility matrices. Uh, to kind of monitor it, and we are on we now have a follow up project to try to build a tool to uh, ease the monitoring in case such an outbreak uh, would happen in the future, which we don't wish, but we want to be ready if uh, if that happens um, and not only Ebola, so we want to make that a bit generic so it could be another disease, um, and we would have the right tools to to deal with it. Um, we now have a project around TB in Gambia, trying to identify hotspots based on uh, mobility from phone, uh, phone data. So I'll speak about Zika and Dengue in a minute. And the uh, project I had presented last time was about malaria in Zambia, so trying to identify risk flows and help people on the ground to prioritize our directions by telling them, okay, that's an area at risk and you should you you should go there and, and try to inform people and uh, spread mosquito nets and, and uh, everything. Um, so now, combating Zika and Dengue in Brazil, uh, what data w do we use? Well, telecom data, um, as almost always. <laughs> um, then we also have incidence data, so telling us um, in each uh, small area how many people are suffering from the disease, so Zika or Dengue, and that's refreshed um, periodically as well, so at least monthly, monthly we get new um, incidence data. Um, and then we have some um, topology, geographic uh, information, so the population per area, uh, the, yeah, the, the surface, the square kilometers, uh, precipitation, uh, altitude, etc. So we've taken all that, um, and our goal was to predict the future incidence uh, of those diseases at each location. Um, and what are the features we use? Um, so it's just past incidence, um, elevation, um, some uh, area, so square kilometers and population um, of the, the place we want to predict the incidence of, but also uh, the 10 places that are the most interconnected with that uh, place, and also the 10 places that uh, have the show the highest importation risk um, to that place. So this is just looking at mobility. This is combining uh, mobility and incidence from the origin uh, area. And again, we've we, f we feed that to uh, some machine learning tool um, and it gives us prediction. And so this is the range of, of questions that people on the ground uh, are now able to, to answer using the tool. Um, so what's the incidence and what will it be over the next four weeks uh, in every region? Uh, how many people move? So, so that, that's typical mobility. Um, what is the importing and exporting risk in uh, some uh, areas? And uh, you, you can relate the incidence level with the actions that were taken because we also get uh, how many actions they've made in each area and so they can see the relationship between that. And so just now showing you the tool, um, so that's the, 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 the main tool. You have an incidence map on the left. Um, you get the past incidence here. You have the predicted incidence 
uh, over there, and this uh, is the actions they have taken. So they can look at that. So that's for the full area, the full period, um, and in this case for dengue, but they, c they can change that. So it's it's an interactive dashboard. They can change the date. They can click on and, and focus on one area if they want. Um, and, and of course, that's uh, particularly important for them. And we, we've shown quite, uh, I mean, a very high correlation. Uh, so that prediction is quite, um, is quite good. Um, and next, they can also... Yeah, you're right. Um, that's Could you repeat the question for that? Yeah, sure. So the question is, um, is there a uh, social bias in the uh, subscribing population to every, every uh, mobile f phone operator? And uh, of course, there is a risk that yes, and and we know for a fact that in some countries it it is it is the case. Um, I know yeah, it's, it 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 used to be the same in Rwanda, where one operator was really uh, had a really high penetration on very low income uh, people. Um, so yes, uh, that's one of the risks, and that's also one of one of the things you want to um to make sure of when you use the data depending on, on the use cases if you, if you know your use case will be mainly focused on poor people yeah sure don't don't try to use uh the mno that just has a high penetration in rich people to to derive insights from that Yeah, some people try to to extrapolate what they have to the full population, but uh, you know, for me, the risk is always when you the the data you have is really underrepresented for one population. Um, I mean, how good can you extrapolate to what you're actually missing? If if you have no data, you can yeah try to reconstruct, but it's not always uh, accurate. Yeah, so the question is, um, what I've shown here was in Africa, um, but there are other countries like Ukraine uh, where there are um, yeah, diseases and, and epidemies. Um, so why not focus on, on those countries? Um, yeah, I, I have no answer. I, I mean, if we, I would be happy to get data and, and, and to play with that. We don't have any restriction to uh, to Africa. We have some other projects uh, in, uh, in South America. We had one project in Bangladesh. So I um, mean, first there is no. We don't want to work only in Africa. It's it's sure that uh, we do get access to to some uh, yeah, African data, and there are many develop uh, yeah, developing issues there. Um, but it's not uh, we yeah. If we can get data, sure, um, it's good for us. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, so. How do we get the data? It's a uh, yeah complex relationship with the mobile phone operator. Um, so it's uh, from experience, it's it's taking a lot of time to build that, um, to gain trust, um, and and all that. But um, yeah, I would be <laughs> really happy to get in touch with with some phone operators in other parts of the world and 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 see if we can, if they're willing to, yeah, give us access to their to their data. Thank you, everybody.